Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to Sound Explained Partials, Overtones, and Harmonics. In the last Sound Explained video, I talked a lot about sine waves, but the sounds we used when producing music are rarely as simple as a single sine wave. If this were the case, mixing would be an incredibly easy task. Most of the sounds we actually use in music production are complex waveforms, which can be defined as a combination of sine waves with varying amplitudes frequencies, and phases. We will learn more about phases in a later Sound Explained video. So here's an example of a complex waveform. And so you can tell it has a whole lot more going on than just a single sine wave. For some sounds, it may be easy to detect the various sine waves that they consist of. One way to visualize the different sine waves that a sound consists of is to use a spectrum monitor. So if you look at the spectrum monitor, you can see the different sine waves that make up the sound when I play them individually or all together. But other sounds may be too complex, such as this gong, for example. or the sine waves may be too close in frequency, to easily detect the individual sine waves. All of the sine waves that make up a single sound, such as a guitar string being plucked or a note played by a trumpet, are referred to as partial tones or just partials. We can separate the partial tones or partials of a sound into the fundamental and the overtones. The lowest frequency partial present in a sound is usually the fundamental, and the partials with higher frequencies than the fundamental are the overtones. In many pitched instruments, such as trumpet, guitar, flute, violin, and so on, the frequencies of the overtones will be related to the frequency of the fundamental as whole number multiples. When this is the case, we call these partials harmonics. So if we listen to this sound, the first harmonic is the fundamental and has a frequency of 100 Hz. And the second harmonic will have a frequency value that is the frequency of the fundamental tone multiplied by 2. So in this example, that is 200 hertz. The third harmonic will have a frequency value that is the frequency of the fundamental multiplied by 3. And in this case, that is 300 hertz. And so on. So the frequency of the nth harmonic is the frequency of the fundamental times n. And you can see in this example, the fourth harmonic is 400. The fifth is 500. The sixth is 600. The seventh is 700, and so on. A saw wave is a perfect example of these harmonics because it consists of all the harmonics of its fundamental, and only the harmonics. A sound doesn't have to have a partial present for every harmonic for them to be considered harmonics. A square wave, for example, consists of only the odd harmonics, or partials with frequencies that are the fundamental frequency multiplied by 1, 3, 5, and so on. So here's an example of a square wave. And if I disable all of the even harmonics of this sound, you'll hear it sounds more like a square wave. 
and you can see over here that the harmonics line up. Any overtones with frequencies that are not related to the fundamental frequency in this way are called inharmonic overtones. Bells are a common example of an instrument that produces inharmonic overtones. Now even though pitched instruments such as violins, flutes, and trumpets create complex waveforms with multiple partials, we don't tend to perceive them as their individual partials. Instead we perceive the combination of the partials as a single sound, with a single pitch. The pitch we perceive is that of the fundamental. And this is especially the case when our partials are harmonics. So here's a pure sine wave. And a few other sounds. We can really get an idea of our perception of pitch regarding complex waveforms when we observe the phenomenon of the missing fundamental. This phenomenon occurs when we have a sound where the partials suggest a fundamental frequency that is not actually present in the sound wave. So here's an example of that using a square wave. And here is the square wave without the fundamental. You can hear it sounds a lot more hollow because it is missing that fundamental, but you still perceive the notes to be the same pitch. Now, when the partials of a sound don't cause us to perceive a particular pitch, we refer to the sound as noise. Cymbals and shakers are good examples of instruments we use that create noise. And we sometimes work with white noise, pink noise, and maybe other types of noise while producing music as well. So you can hear that none of these sounds have a clear pitch, but we still perceive the combination of partials as a single sound rather than as the independent partial tones. <laughs> 